Good evening, everyone. Well, it's cold outside, but I have to say I'm happy to be inside the gym and watching the Hardwood High School basketball. And tonight we had a good matchup between North Dickinson and Norway. And as you can see, head coach Chris Matson giving his players some advice heading into the third quarter. With the Knights up 21-19 and a half, they kept the attack on. Dan Ball finds Austin Graywald, who knocks down the trifecta, 24-19 Knights. But the Nordics do a nice job of attacking the basket. Matt Schultz finds Ken Pekarik for the reverse layup. Nordics just down five. Then the Knights do a good job of shaking the Nordics. It would be Isaac Bray, who blows by his defender and makes the flow and Norway is only up by seven. Then the Nordics have a response. Logan O'Neill finds Pekarik for the three in the corner. Nordics down four, 29-25. But Knights start to get fancy. And Randy Mueller will drive to the basket with his left hand and finishes with the left. Knights go up 33-28. And in the fourth, Nordics try to keep it close as Tim Ruska gets close to the basket, makes the layup here to keep it at six, 33-27. But the Knights close out the game with a dagger. Mueller finds Graywald who knocks down the trifecta. Bang, right there. It was 40 to 29 at that point, and the Knights hang on to the victory, 40 to 33. So let's go to the scoreboard and check out other games as West Iron County would fall to Houghton 64 to 52. Gremlins Ryan Labarge had 21 points in the win, and also Calumet beat Barriga 53 to 18. And then Hancock beat Jeffers 64 to 48. Alex Almquist had 33 points. Troy Kinnanen had 20 for Jeffers. And Big Bay also played against Mid Penn, and Mid Penn won 64 to 44. Excuse me there. And the Wolverines Brett Brandstrom had 21 points and 29 rebounds with a monstrous double double. And we also had Manistique beating Rudyard 64 to 60. And then Antonagan fell to Lake Linden Hubble 64 to 41. Then Munising beat Carney Nato 40 to 37. And Dollar Bay beat Republic 33 to 26. And then we also had Butternut falling to Besmer 80 to 39. Besmer's Taylor Smith had 20 points. And then Ironwood fell to Drummond 64 to 49, but Ironwood junior Adam Mackey scored his 1,000 career point in the loss. And closing it out, Forest Park beat Bark River Harris 67 to 64. And let's go to some girls basketball. Escanaba hosting Menominee in a great Northern Conference game. And early in the second quarter, Escanaba leads by one. Cody Jenshak inbounds two. And two, one of the Eskimos finds Lindsey Collins for the basket. Then Eskimos adds to their lead as Jen Shack gets the steal and goes coast to coast for the layup. Eskimos lead by just seven. And they're doing a good job right there on their home floor. And Menominee comes back as Amanda Peterson makes a nice pass in the paint to Carly Barley for two. And then the Maroons would get at it again as Aaliyah Steart would bounce to Paige Owens for the long two-pointer, but Escanaba led 18 to 12 at halftime. To the fourth quarter where Jen Shack gets it to Michelle Lefebvre on the baseline. She scores here to put Escanaba ahead 34 to 25. Lefebvre finished with 17 points and 10 rebounds and Eskimos won the game 40 to 28. Let's go to the scoreboard as West Iron County would beat Ewan Trout Creek 56 to 45. White Cons, Kylie Erickson at 24 points in the win. Gwynn beat Superior Central 53 to 28. Cougars, Vanessa Freeberg at 20 points in the win. Then Westwood beat Iron Mountain in a close one 45 43. Besmer beat Butternut 40 to 16. St. Ignace rolled over Cedarville 71 to 26. Ishpeming beat Lance 49 to 38. And we also had some hockey as Houghton beat Lance. 9-1. Michigan Tech hockey team ended 2012 with the GLI championship, but started 2013 on the wrong foot. This past weekend, they got swept on the road at Minnesota Duluth. Each game was decided by one goal. On Friday, they lost one to nothing and couldn't find the back of the net. And on Saturday, could, they couldn't complete a comeback as they lost 5-4. The key this weekend was the Bulldogs' early scoring. They scored three first period goals, and the Huskies thought they were prepared for the series. Like. And now here come the Bulldogs on the power play center. I thought we had a great week of practice. We had lots of energy, high tempo, and then right from the get-go, we just didn't. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of energy in the building, and we didn't create much on our own. We weren't very good offensively, and uh, you know, we have to play better with the puck. I thought defensively, for the most part, we did a good job, but uh, offensively, you can have nights like this. And, 
give me puck. Puck's too smart going in. Score. And Tech will now play its first home game in more than a month when Bemidji State comes to Houghton this weekend.